There has been some talk about Final Fantasy VII's Rebirth, the upcoming game, combat system, how it differs from the remake and that it's actually too hard for some people. I kind of understand that sentiment, because when I played remake for the first time a couple days ago, the new demo, Junon demo that came out, it was actually quite overwhelming. The combos were very complicated at first and some things I realized only after a couple playthroughs. So in this video I want to show you the basics, how to properly execute combos of every character available, at least so far because we don't have Kate Sith yet. I will also show you some general tips, useful items and spells that will make it way easier for you to get the hang of combat. So the very first thing you should do in my opinion is go to the camera settings and turn off the screen shake. At least for me it made a lot of a difference because it doesn't really take away anything from combat but it well makes the screen shake less and you can focus on combat more. The next very important thing if you want to learn the basics is to find Chadley in the Chocobo Ranch in the Junon demo because he was the person that actually made me a better combatant. He has a bunch of basic topics to cover and also of course tutorial battles which are very very useful because they explain every single character, combos and synergies. We will go through them in this video but I also think that the tutorial doesn't explain everything the best because some synergies are a bit counterintuitive and I will try to explain it the best I can as and as simple as I can to show you what other things you can incorporate during combat that maybe the tutorial did not tell you. Every character is distinct now but very Versatile. For example, Aerith is no longer a heal bot, but now a proper, let's say, a black mage from previous Final Fantasy titles. Because she can dish out a lot of damage and also has this turret-like playstyle that she places wards beneath her and when you stand in it, you do more damage and you also are immune to some forms of attacks and also can cast spells uninterrupted, which is very, very important. So we will go through every character available to us right now and I will explain to you what combos to do with them in order to get the hang of combat. After after that we will talk about synergies between the characters which are also very important and also useful tips that you can find useful in the overworld. The tutorial will try to teach you about blocking and of course that pressing circle will fill your ATB gouge which is used to perform various moves. Blocking is quite important in Rebirth's gameplay, especially for Cloud and also Red 13, because when you execute a block with perfect timing you're gonna render the attack of the enemies ineffective. But what I like to do, which I actually learned from one of the Reddit posts, is go to Cloud's Punisher mode right away so his alternative stance of fighting. Especially in the beginning of combat, if you're gonna get the first strike or even just normal combat, the enemies usually take a second to wind up and during this time you can unleash a powerful combo from your Punisher stance to fill your ATB gouge. After that, when you see the opponent's attack actually begin its wind up, you can press R1 to block and immediately go back to operator stance and you're gonna appear behind the target. That will let you get some free hits in again and your ATB gouge should be pretty much full. Also remember that Cloud finally has some aerial attacks in Rebirth and use it to your advantage. After you press circle to perform a dodge, you actually can press square to unleash a ranged attack. You can either mash it for a short combo or you can charge it up by holding square to unleash a bigger wind up. This is very useful especially against airborne enemies. The tutorial also mentions a very important thing which is that certain abilities such as Cloud's triple slash and Tifa's focus strike can be used to take down enemies in midair. So be on the lookout for the abilities that have this symbol next to them because when you're gonna face an airborne enemy you're gonna want to use them. It made a world of a difference in the Junon demo because a lot of enemies are in the air, especially the boss, so it's very useful to master. And that of course goes to all the melee characters like Cloud, Red 13 and Tifa. So even though Cloud can feel clunky at first, when you master it, it actually feels pretty smooth. Especially when you begin with the Punisher mode and you unleash the combo as I tell you, then you're gonna press block and you're gonna appear behind the enemy after pressing circle and going back into operator mode. You're gonna appear behind your target, can unleash another combo and then you are free to do however you please. Remember to utilize the block, it's very important in Rebirth and also the dodge to a lesser extent, especially if you want to have some airborne attacks, especially on Cloud. It is not quite Dark Souls level of requirement, but it is very useful to have in your arsenal. Barret is actually quite similar to his remake alliteration, so if you ever feel overwhelmed, you can switch to Barret and actually should feel quite comfortable in his role because he's very similar to his part 1 counterpart. Here the tutorial explains it very well. You shoot with the square button and remember to use that lock on feature with R3. Barret's signature ability is overcharge. By pressing triangle you will unleash this powerful ability dealing massive damage and greatly filling your ATB gouge. After you use it it will take some time for it to recharge to be unleashed again. However you can press triangle again while it's recharging to fill the overcharge gouge faster. Pressing triangle after using an ability or a standard 
accurate attack event will greatly fill the gauge as well. Once you fill up your ATB gauge, remember to use his signature abilities like Steel Skin and Maximum Fury. Steel Skin makes Barret a bit of a tank because he's gonna be less likely to be interrupted while unleashing an attack and also will get reduced damage taken. Maximum Fury though consumes all of your ATB and unleashes a hail of bullets. The more ATB charges consumed, the more potent it becomes. So here the tutorial does a very well job of explaining how to play Barret and if you ever feel overwhelmed, feel free to switch to him and you're gonna deal some good damage and feel comfortable if you ever played him in the remake version. Tifa is also quite a bit similar to her remake counterpart, but now her triangle ability gives her some extra tools to work with. Once you gather enough ATB and unleash Unbridled Strength, you're gonna have a set of new moves that you can execute with triangle. For example, Omni Strike is a great finishing move. It also functions as a buff, increasing your basic attack strength. You can also combo the basic Whirling Uppercut and follow it with Omni Strike and then the final one Rise and Fall. Unlike Cloud, Tifa does not have built-in aerial abilities, but she can get into the air by using her other abilities like Dive Kick. Tifa is also great in the dodging department, because after you press triangle, you can press square and she will circle around the enemy and hit him. It has a decent area of effect damage and you can also maneuver through enemies and keep your distance. Also, a lot of her synergy abilities move her through the air so you can be able to execute your moves from there as well once you synergize with other party members. Now, Aerith's gameplay is quite a bit different from Remake. She is no longer a heal bot, she can actually dish out some damage and has a very unique playstyle. You still use her staff of course and build up ATB that way, when you hold down the square button you're gonna charge up the Tempest skill. And when you unleash it while fully charged you're gonna summon a fleeting familiar which will assist you in combat. And it's gonna increase air of spells and automatically attack foes she is targeting. At first it was pretty hard for me to not get interrupted while using Aerith, but then I discovered her bread and butter abilities, which are the ward skills. Her radiant ward is pretty much mandatory in my opinion. It creates a circle underneath her which is actually pretty big and it grants her invisibility while casting spells and strengthens her basic attacks. It's great when you charge up your ATB because before you cast a spell like for example arrow on uh, flying targets you will not be interrupted anymore and you will not waste your spell. It is pretty much mandatory once your ATB bar is full and you want to cast some spells on Aerith. Not to mention her basic attacks become more potent. Then there is the arcane ward which makes you cast your spells twice, a very potent combo and you can stand on both of them together. You also have the Soul Drain and Sorcerer's Storm abilities. Soul Drain siphons MP from opponents absorbing additional MP from staggered foes. And Sorcerer's Storm is a devastating magical attack that harms all opponents in Aerith's path. It is a close range ability though, so get up close to a group of enemies to hit multiple of them. Also her triangle ability, the Ward Shift, is very useful especially if the AI will control Aerith because you can move back quickly to your wards when you gonna switch back to her. So make sure you will always stand in this area to get the additional buffs we before mentioned. And again, remember that those wards stack, so cast both of them together to get the most benefit out of them. Also, remember that ward shift essentially serves as another dodge button. When you're in a sticky situation, use it to get away from big attack moves. I must say that Erev grew on me a lot in this part of the game, because this tower defense-like playstyle is very rewarding when you get the hang of it. And last but not least, Red 13, finally playable in the rebirth. He might prove the most challenging of the bunch, not only because he's the newest party member, but also also that his combo takes a bit of time to get used to. His vengeance mode requires you to block in order to unleash it and it powers up all of his abilities. But do not worry, you do not have to perfect block or anything in order to fill it up. There is actually a couple of ways with how you can fill it up. So let's finally talk a bit about synergy attacks. When you press R1, not only are you gonna automatically block, you're also gonna have this menu with synergy attacks with other party members. And what's great about Red's synergy attacks is that he automatically blocks when he uses this synergy attack. So before the enemy attacks, you can charge it up and you're gonna have your vengeance mode fill up a little bit. Basic blocks also work, but you do not have to stand in place with red in order to fill it up and have a powerful attack ready. So don't be static with red, instead go on the offensive and block when it's necessary. And worst comes to worst, if you feel a bit overwhelmed at first, you can switch back to another party member and the AI does a decent job to actually fill up his vengeance bar. When you press triangle, you're gonna go into this vengeance mode which boosts all of red's attacks. You're gonna be able to use the siphon fang which siphons life from enemies, but his most powerful ability currently is the Crescent Claw. If you use it during Vengeance mode, it's gonna unleash a powerful free hit combo that AoEs all enemies, but it does deplete the Vengeance bar instantly after you use it, so use it as a finisher. It's also important to note that you do not need to have your Vengeance bar all filled up in order to use it. If the enemy is staggered, feel free to press it earlier and maybe unleash this powerful Crescent Claw combo or before just some other attacks and then finish up with Crescent Claw. All the full Vengeance bar does is make it 
it lasts longer, but feel free to use it earlier if you feel the need to. So summarizing, do not feel the need to play defensively with red, go on the offensive and after you block an attack, press square and you're gonna be able to unleash another attack and then keep going until you're gonna get your vengeance bar up. And remember to use the synergy attacks because it also serves as a gap closer and it's an automatic block, so you're gonna fill up that vengeance bar even faster. To finish it up, let's talk a bit about synergy. When you're gonna guard with R1, you're gonna bring up the menu of synergy attacks that you can execute with your party members. They do not cost you anything, but they also do not fill up your synergy ticks, so to speak, so the bars that you're gonna have together in order to execute powerful synergy limit breaks. Because that's what they pretty much are, a duo limit break among two party members. So to execute this powerful move, you have to build up your synergy with one of your party members. But the attacks you bring up with R1 actually do not fill them, but they do serve as a good utility to build up the ATB bar of two of your party members together. For example, you can use Counterfire with Cloud and Barret to team up with him and nullify a ranged attack and deliver a counter strike. And some of those combos require you to just smash the button and the other you have to hold it down, for example the power cleave with Tifa. And the best use for most of them, at least what I found, is to build up the ATV bar together with your party member. Because when you unleash this small combo, you're gonna both fill up your ATB bar a bit and that way you can have two of them being full eventually and unleash powerful abilities. But to build up the actual synergy to unleash the powerful double limit break, you have to use the abilities of your characters. So it can be a little bit counterintuitive at first. For example, I thought that the synergy attack that you bring up with R1 when you block actually builds up the bar to unleash the limit breaks. But no, you just have to use the basic abilities, well not basic abilities, but the one you use when you spend your ATB, and then eventually when you use two on each of the character, you will be able to unleash the synergy attack. So you better get the hang of it because it can be very powerful and game changing. And to finish the video, let's talk about some general tips. I already mentioned to turn off the screen shake in the camera settings because it does make the fights more clear in my opinion. But let's talk about the actual abilities in game that anyone can use. For example, the Asses ability can help you judge the enemy's weakness. And this weakness is very useful to know because, for example, the airborne enemies are often weak to wind. And if you use Aero ability of Erif, you're gonna be able to stagger them easier and make your life a whole lot better. So trust me, if you're having troubles in a battle, simply check what the enemy is weak against and you can prepare for it better the second time and you'll be surprised how much of a breeze it can be. Because at its core, it's still a final fantasy game. Even if it has more action elements, it's still an RPG deep down and it's worthy to know all the in and outs of statistics and what is useful against what enemy. Another tip that a lot of people mentioned to me is to not try to brute force your way through encounters. Try to slow down a bit and be a bit more methodical. For example, at first I had a lot of trouble with the fish boss, but then when I realized how to do my aerial attacks and how to combo them properly, it was way easier. So just learning the basics of what your character is capable of makes a whole of a difference. And seriously, make Chadley one of your best friends, because he has a lot of useful tutorials and a lot of useful combat simulations that I even used in this video and I explained a lot through him. So very, very important character in the game that will help you understand the game better. Also a huge shout out to Tokata and Fuke from the Final Fantasy VII Remake Reddit who compiled a lot of tips that were very useful in making this video. I honestly couldn't get the hang of the combat as fast as I did without those tips, so huge kudos to him. I can't wait for the full release of the game when we're gonna have even more combinations and even more abilities to work with. Thank you so much for watching and visit me on my live streams at Twitch TV Kenra when we're gonna be going through the whole game together and also make some more videos. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe if you liked it and I see you again very soon. See ya!